in the Netherlands in particular. Massive protests last year, happening again now. These are farmers effectively being forced off the land. Their whole livelihood, not to mention all the produce that they, that they supply for us, is going to disappear because of these desperate and insane efforts to get rid of uh, lower emissions. There was an extraordinary moment um, uh, recently in, in the Netherlands when I think uh, the Prime Minister, a bicycle riding type, uh, he became upset that uh, farmers had uh, showed up with uh, burning torches to protest a minister's uh, appearance during the <laughs> campaign trail. And they weren't really burning torches like, you know, Frankenstein movies. They were just little, you know, they were pretty wimpy little torches, but they wanted to make a point. Anyway, the Prime Minister said that politicians must be allowed to do, the, do their job freely. Now, why doesn't that apply to farmers? Why doesn't that apply to people who are actually productive as opposed to politicians? Uh, and no wonder half of Europe is, uh, is enraged at this point because you've got the actual product, productive side, not just in terms of the economy, but in terms of feeding people. Yep, it's now under exactly. attack from climate lunatics. Yep. It's, uh, it's coming It's coming here. As we know, it started in New Zealand already. It's mm -hmm. coming here. The, this, yep. is, this is all a warning for us. Now, let's get back to American politics because there's been a couple of uh, little uh, intercessions that I'd love to get your take on. First on from first up from the First Lady, here's Jill Biden mm -hmm. on, on whether her husband ought to take a cognitive test. Nikki Haley, one of the Republican candidates, is calling for mental competency tests for those politicians over the age of 75. What do you it's think ridiculous. about that? Ridiculous. Would your husband ever take one of those? <laughs> I mean, we haven't even discussed... We would never even discuss something like that. I bet, I bet they did. She probably booked him in a couple of times, but he forgot about it. Point discussing it with him because he wouldn't understand what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> By the way, exactly. be, being, being the president is probably a fairly decent mental competency test just in and of itself. Yeah. And it's and one that Joe Biden him. keeps every single time. Yeah. The only thing he succeeded in doing is repeatedly defying gravity. This is a guy who, time after time, falls up stairs. He does. He did it again who yesterday as well. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, he did it on, again hang yesterday. On, hang on, this, son. He just, uh, he just managed to stay upright this time, though. I've, hey, got no, to show no, you, no. I've got to show you quickly before we go, though, Come on. Kamala Harris uh, showing oh, a little no, bit more please. of the, the, that leftist hatred uh, for the right and also her ability to laugh at anything. Mm. And I went home one day and I said, well, what's... Why are conservatives bad, Mommy? Because I thought we were supposed to conserve things. <laughs> I couldn't reconcile it. Now I can. <laughs> oh, isn't she funny talking about how she hates people who disagree with her? Dear Lord. Here's the thing about Kamala Harris. If she was able somehow, if she was a genius who could solve every problem on the earth and, and bring the Middle East together and, uh, and solve every energy crisis, it wouldn't matter because the laugh kills it anyway. The laugh is the biggest destructive negative force probably ever <laughs> unleashed in American politics. No one's voting for the laugh. They the need laugh to weaponise it. 